Well, it's another week of the Glow Nigeria Premier League, week 23 to be precise. And today it's a double header coming to you live from the Liberation Stadium in Port Harcourt. Dolphins FC versus Crown FC will be the first match. That might Welcome to the Liberation Stadium in Port Harcourt. Well, you can see the Dolphins taking on Crown, but that's not all. It's a double header today from this venue. Two crackling league matches in the Nigeria, Glow Premier League in Nigeria. And that's what we're bringing you today. The second one, of course, is coming right after this. But uh, first things first, it's a beautiful city. They call it the Garden City. And uh, the weather itself is quite beautiful. It's slightly sunny, but the weather is cool. Just as you would like it if you were going to go out there on the pitch to do battle. The Liberation Stadium in Port Harcourt is one of the traditional centers of Nigerian football. And Port Harcourt, one of the few states in Nigeria, River State that is to say, that has two clubs in the Globe Premier League. Both of them in action today, of course. The first would be Dolphins and uh, the older of the two sides, Sharks, would uh, be involved in the second one. Interesting to take a look at uh, who will be filing out for these two sides right from the onset. And uh, well, first of all, we look at the log from the top. It's Cano Pillars who is still clinging to the top spot on 37 points, but very closely behind them, breathing down their neck. Abia Warriors, the newcomers, deputants in the Globe Premier League. Nasarawa United, quite surprisingly, they're doing marvelously well this season. And of course, Dolphins in fourth place who are playing here this afternoon. Against Crown, as you can see, second from bottom, not a very uh, glorious uh, position to be in, but uh, I'm sure they will give it their all today to see if they can inch up the table. And the way it's structured is such that a win for Crown could potentially move them on a few rungs on the log here. And uh, for Dolphins, well, if they were to nick victory here, depending on the goal margin, they might well go top uh, above uh, Kano Pillars. Pillars at the moment are on top with 37 points and the Dolphins have 34 points from 22 games as well. The fans are not uh, yet here in their numbers. This is midweek and a lot of people would have gone to their various businesses and to work as well. But we expect that uh, by the time we get to the end of the day's proceedings of the double header here, we will have a much more appreciable attendance. Uh, here to watch these two games. It's two for the price of one. Uh, so I'm sure a lot of them would want to take advantage of this. We're marking time now and waiting uh, for the two sides to file onto the pitch. And from the tunnel, you can see them led by the match commissioner, of course, and uh, the match officials as well. Coming onto the pitch there. Uh, the two sides uh, really would want to win. Either side would want to win today for quite obvious reasons. Dolphins, they're chasing top spot. And uh, Crown, they're trying to get away from the relegation waters in which they are swimming at the moment. Well, whether River State is a place where they can swim out of the relegation waters remains to be seen. Dolphins are very good at swimming, but they're not swimming anywhere except uh, going for the top as it were. Well, we're waiting. The ceremony is here taking quite some time and uh, it's the traditional handshakes. Dolphins, of course, led by the mammoth, the giant goalkeeper, Sandy Rotimi, who has been around quite a number of club sites in Nigeria over the years, but he's been since actually stuck with Dolphins for some time now. And uh, that's uh, Victor Ezurike, uh, the man they call the Terminator. And Crown playing in their away strip today, yellow, all yellow outfit with uh, green uh, trimmings. And the team sheets, first for Dolphins, the home side, you have Sunday Rotimi, who is the captain of the side today. And uh, a good, strong uh, field they have there. Amepula is there. And Mecca Tuloma, a man in Olowo, very experienced. Of course, uh, the Terminator Victor Ezurike is there. M.M. Edwok, one of the sizzling attackers we have in Nigeria. Ifani Egwin, actually not Edwin, uh, is also there, as is the new kid on the block there, Ebube Okoku. They're all there. 
the match officials uh, coming uh, in here, the center referee for the day is from Niger State, Shehu Musa is his name. First assistant is Philip Hembe from the FCT, Federal Capital Territory. And Abba, Abbas Mohammed uh, from Niger State also is the second assistant. The fourth official, of course, is from River State here and is uh, Okonye Okirie. And then for Crown Football Club of Bomosho, well, uh, Crown have not been uh, having uh, a great time here uh, in the league this season. They are second from bottom, but they also have some known names. So Lee Haigbe, ex junior international, is there. Giwa Mohammed, Lee uh, Leo, Charles Etue, uh, who is the captain for the day. Benson Omoduku, Yomi Olauke, Lekon Aguloye, Oji Jacob, Nedum Francis and Femi Ajayi making up the starting uh, team sheet for Crown Football Club all the way from Ogbomosho uh, in Oshun State. That of course in the southwest of Nigeria. The caretaker coach is Daniel Ogumodede. Well, uh, you in the course of the commentaries here, you'll get to hear why he is in acting capacity. Stanley Aguma is one of the uh, second new generation coaches in Nigeria who have been uh, coming on in stride, in great stride. And uh, he's been doing so well, except that uh, he wants the title. I'm sure he wants it very badly as well. His opposite number, and that's Ogumodede, uh, who is the caretaker coach for Crown Football Club of Ogbomosho. Wow. It looks uh, very promising here. As I said earlier, the weather is beautiful. And my name is Bowie. Bowie Atama, as the teams acknowledge uh, the anthem from their sides. Kalechi Amudiwe is uh, sharing commentaries with me today. Uh, good to be back, uh, no doubt. Uh, it's been quite a while. And you can see one man who not only hopes to take his team to yet another three points in the second stanza, Sunday Rotimi, vastly experienced in the Nigeria Premier League. Uh, he's done it all, he's seen it all, done it all, one of the trophies on offer, and he's still going strong. He hopes today uh, to keep out a crown. And that will be a ninth clean sheet of the season, a record actually, because he's got eight clean sheets already. Well, crown of Obama shot, that's the captain there. Um, that's uh, Leko Aguloye. Uh, Aguloye knows that his side there in all sorts of trouble. Just one place off uh, bottom. Uh, they did have it good in the early part of the season, uh, but since mid uh, first stanza, they seem to have lost their way and have been dropping like a stone since. And we're off on the way. It is uh, the home side uh, who have control of the ball now. Dolphins, of course, playing in their traditional blue outfits with uh, white letterings. And uh, they're keeping a good uh, spell of possession here, starting quite confidently. And uh, confidence is what they need, but that was a little bit careless. That was careless uh, from uh, Chidi Ebero Collier. The tall figure there of uh, Crown FC's uh, Jacob Oji. Another careless uh, touch to the ball there, but fortunately for the man in yellow, they regained possession and that uh, well. That was good interception, very timely tackle uh, from uh, Dolphins taking the ball away. A lot of drumming to our right. That that uh, that takedown illegal. Ifani Ogwim, Dolphins top scorer for the season, goes down. But uh, Crown looking in uncompromising mood. The man who took him down, Ali Ali, a free kick it is. I say Gwim gets a helping hand up from the referee, Shehu Musa. It's a good position from where to lash the ball into the danger zone. And, uh, well, that wasn't well taken. And uh, no communication at all. No communication between uh, that, uh, that ball, as it were, and the man who should have been at that end to receive it. It looked like a good opportunity for Dolphins, and they surely could have made more out of that.
no way. I, I, I don't know it's early days yet, but why can't Crown just come out attacking? It does seem that uh, why they are there at the bottom, never ever go looking for anything on the road. Well, you know how many times we've talked about this, the tendency for away teams to go uh, with defense in their, on their minds. It's not paid much dividends over the years, but uh, somehow they simply don't seem to be able to get away from it. We talk about it time and again, but somehow you get the impression that uh, they don't listen to us, or that if they do, they conclude that, uh, well, if we knew as much as uh, they did, we should be where they were, and not uh, behind the microphones here. But it, it still defeats me that you go to play an away game, and the mindset is to go away and draw. If you go with draw on your mind, chances are you will lose. And that's what we've seen. The few teams that have come out to play attacking football from the onset have ended up well. But this is carelessness of the worst order. Again, coming from Chidi Okolie, it seems to be a little bit jittering. Two balls is given away very cheaply already. And he's gone down as well. I wonder if he is uh, carrying some sort of injury. Well, if he is, it's a, a surprise that uh, he started this game. He could have been on the bench. Um, there, a case of outrunning the ball by M.M. Edward. That's the Dolph talisman for Dolphins. And the Dol Dolphins getting the, the attackers actually getting good service, but uh, they don't seem to have been able to do much with it. Uh, you will think that the hats of these players are not quite yet in the game at the moment. In their last nine games, in all competitions, Dolphins unbeaten. The last loss in the league coming in week 19, away to the champions, Kano Pillars, where they lost by three goals to one. Since then, of course, they've gained revenge on Pillars and they've managed to reach the final of the FA Cup, where they've faced the almighty Enyim. But that game should have been held this Saturday, but it's been postponed. And it's come coming on again, again, that tall man attempting to lash the ball in there. Uh, you would expect a, a, a little more of uh, that kind of attack from uh, the men in yellow. Five minutes gone, and uh, we're yet to see any real attempts on um, goal from either side. And perhaps it's to be expected, Dolphins have had uh, a major share of uh, the proceedings thus far. But in the final third, they've not looked. Uh, Anything like threatening. Oh, good done. It's all there. And a great opportunity. And a chance. Oh, what a timely tackle there. That was well worked. And it was going like luck, luck work for Dolphins. Except for that man in yellow who turned out to be the spoiled sport. Of course, but again, when you look at the replay, did they win just take? Many touches well. There was a good shot for a penalty there because uh, he was clipped. You can see good one two with a drop. He beats his man neatly and gets taken out of the equation. They're lucky. Very lucky because uh, you would think that that's a header directed goal. Well, Dolphins now beginning to ask some serious questions here. But uh, I did think that Charles Atuwe was lucky to get away with that one. Extremely lucky. And again, here they were lucky. There should have been more uh, power put into that header. Uh, but eventually, it was not uh, just happening uh, for that man, uh, Tijani Adamu. Dolphin still coming forward. And the tackles are beginning to fly now. Confident play from uh, Crown. 
Crown Football Club, the way they are going, one thing that seems to be certain at this stage is that they are not likely to be crowned champions of the Globe Premier League this season. Uh, judging from their, their position on the log. They wouldn't like to hear you say that, even though they know that probably is not very far from the truth. <laughs> and they're toying around with the ball there, trying to get it uh, away from uh, Danger. Chizaba Mayfield was able to control the ball quite well. In the end, uh, throw in goes to... The man from Rivers State. Well, and just uh, on top of all the problems they seem to be having out on the pitch, Crown as well, they do have all sorts of problems as well in the boardroom. Players are complaining. They've not been paid uh, for months. And uh, the coach was recently changed. Suspended, actually. I think it will be a good statement from that Crown. Well, that really didn't seem to be the best option chosen again and the tumble the referee says play on and the crowd may well have thought they had a shout for a penalty there but uh, Shehu Musa uh, the man in the middle didn't seem to think so well it did happen right in front of him the incident uh, that is Oliha Aibe involved again but uh, the player is still down inside the Dolphins 18 yard box if we really can uh, Get another look at that. Shehu Musa finally taking a look at what's wrong with the young man Femi Ajay. Still rolling around. Yeah, you can see. I think uh, Dolphins maybe a little lucky too because the ball had left him. Maybe a, a lot more accidental rather than intended. Well, but uh, you could see his hand also coming from behind. It means he tried to use the hand uh, to impede the progress of that uh, of uh, Ajayi but yes I think Dolphins were lucky on this occasion first it was uh, Crown that were lucky uh, when Charles Atua got away with uh, what appeared to be uh, a foul inside the box and now is the turn of uh, Dolphins to get off lightly like I did say, uh, Sunday Rotimi has uh, managed eight clean sheets this season and he was ably aided by one of the men who stopped Femi Ajayi that time and that's the former Hatland man, the man mounted in defense, Emmanuel Oluwo. It's a tackle, is going to be a free kick to Dolphins. And the man that was uh, killed over there was Jonathan, uh, Jonathan Zikia. Player of the season, last season for Nimbe City. Dolphins saw enough of him last season to know he was the solution to their problems at left back. Didn't waste any time taking him on at the beginning of this season. A much better delivery that time, but uh, not much anticipation from Dolphins. Uh, the attack seemed to be flat-footed there. Zikia again. Uh, Femi Ajay trots back on after receiving much needed treatment. He's key if Crown is going to get anything away from, uh, from this game today. One of the teams not to have won away. They've just taken one point out of... Uh, that's out of uh, 33 on the road. That's not good enough uh, for with That's really relegation form. A point from 33. That's really poor. It goes uh, down to what we were saying earlier about uh, the tendency for clubs to go away not expecting to win. And uh, if you don't expect to win, I think you hardly ever win. You've got to want it to get it. Another Dolphins free kick. And that one is a fat. Well, the goalkeeper... Uh, seems to be a little bit awkward about that. The ball took a bounce just in front of him, and that may have put him in uh, more trouble. 
Well, you can see that was a well struck shot from a Medrock. One bounce, two bounces, and he came scrambling across. A shot corner taken already, and the header called. It's headed across uh, instead of uh, just being brought back into play for his men to try and do something with that. Emmanuel Olowo there, the looping big figure of uh, that man. <laughs> he's, he's so big and so tall uh, that, uh, I mean, he intimidates uh, his opponents. But I think here he was in full flight. And, well, he managed to get a good head on that, but the direction was lacking. Crown have been able to hold their men thus far. That was a poor move. Just giving the ball rather easily. The Dolphins now. Zikir. Nimble footed. Dolphins still raging forward. A good one across. It's not unappreciated by the fans here. Some desperate defending from Giwa Hamid. Well, for some reason, the Dolphins coach, Stanley Eguma, is still not happy with something. His side is doing in the final third, but he can't complain because they've really stepped up the pace of, and frequency of their attacks. Another set piece for Crown to defend, to be driven in by that man. A shout for a penalty. The referee not impressed. And Dolphins coming close again. That one locked forward. But uh, somehow the fight seemed to have been taken out of the attackers. Maybe as a result of the referee ignoring that call, that child for a penalty. I think uh, it's going to be something much more glaring for the referee to get involved here. I think it's, uh, well, I, I don't know why, but there's no Modoku uh, would seem to be writhing in some pain there. And if that's, that's not play acting, then it must be something quite crunchy. I think it was more like a follow-up that caught him. And uh, that's an early booking for Ifanye Wim. You, you, you really don't get to see four players like this get early yellow cards. But I think uh, that was uh, something a bit petulant. Did happen where we couldn't see. If I knew Gwim, like we told you earlier, uh, we got the graphics slightly mixed up there. It's Ifanye Gwim, not Edwin, and uh, he's got a yellow card. Ifanye Gwim, of course, uh, part of the, of the uh, Chan Super Eagles. And uh, one of the men, I'm sure, Dolphins are counting on to pull the chestnuts out of the fire for them this afternoon. was taking a chance. It's a Sunday run to me. Left it until the last moment. But there are Dolphin go again. It's a moment Rock. Roaring forward. He has a man on him. And he's very nimble footed. Eventually the ball is pulled out of the head again. And uh, that time he just missed target rather completely from a Bube Okofu. Former El Kanemi man. Did very well last season, and then it was just a matter of time before Dolphin scouts knew they needed him in this team, and uh, he's waiting uh, with uh, some goals already this season. A key reason why they are the FA Cup final, and he's brought that form back into the league. The final whim couldn't get the better of his man there as a new made life difficult for him. But it's still Dolphins, it's coming back again, Tijani Adamu. And that pass was meant for Zikir, just too far away from him. On occasions, you must admit that Crown are playing some rather careful game, and that was careless from Emmanuel Olowo. Uh, he was able to backtrack beautifully and retrieve that ball. So, in a manner of speaking, he did make amends. Dolphins again coming forward.
I really do think that Crown they will have a, a very bad day down that right side of uh, the Dolphins' attack because uh, M.M. Edwards, for some reason, that's why being naturally left-footed, has taken up uh, that right-wing position. He does well there as well, but the Crown defender who's backing him hasn't done a good job so far because each time M.M. Um, Edward drifts into that final third, he more or less gets his crosses in or gets a corner. If that continues, Crown might just uh, be wailing at the end of today. That throw in from Zikie didn't get close to any man in blue shirt. And it's Crown that uh, easily rebuffed it. Solid, solid defending from Victor Ezuruki. Call him the Terminator. Uh, you know, surprisingly, Victor Ezuruki and Emmanuel Lolo, that was the center back pairing uh, for Hatland of Awere, who will play in today's second game. Uh, you know, when Hatland reached really the Cup Champions League final in 2009, so they've been reunited here in our Dolphins, and Dolphins, you can see, head clean sheets already this season. And I guess why they call him the Terminator is not because uh, he is a Terminator like as you have in the film uh, <laughs> involving uh, 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 Schwarzenegger and all that. But I think that he terminates the attacking moves of the opponents and uh, he does it rather clinically if you ask me. It's still Dolphins, they're looking sure-footed, they're looking sprightly. They're looking intelligent as well. They're oozing confidence. And uh, well, the pass is eventually coming through to Zikie. Dolphin still in control. M.M. Edwok. Edwok is centrally positioned now. He's moved in from the right flank. Zikie. He needed help there. Nobody close to him. And well, what a takedown there. And uh, <laughs> That would have been the goal of the season if he had been able to execute that properly. Fans applauding the sequence of passes. Eventually ended with that forward ball that caught him over Popu in an offside position. Just for confirmation there. Opoku, he knows that this defense is there for the taking, uh, the, the crown defense. They've let in loads and loads of goals. Just 24 points taken out of uh, 69. And uh, we've done uh, 20 minutes of the first uh, half, and that means 20 minutes of the match, and it's still scoreless between Dolphins of Portacot and Crown of, of Bomosho. And just uh, for the records, oh, what a tackle from behind. I think I see a yellow card coming out. And uh, I'll be surprised if there's no booking there. But it doesn't seem as if uh, Shehu Musa is reaching for his pocket. No, he's not. And uh, that's a very lucky letter. But talking about uh, Crown and their shipping goals this season, uh, they've collected 26 goals and uh, been able to score just 16. So they have a goal difference of minus 10, uh, one of the worst, uh, if you don't count uh, Nembe City, of course. Because they seem to, <laughs> to take the handle when it comes to that. And a friend <laughs> hilariously remarked that it's like Nimbus City sells goals. <laughs> That's why they, they, they've sold out, they've considered so many. But the, the, the chairman of Nimbus City, or rather the owner, uh, Victor Ramson Baribote, something keeps telling him that his side will still make it to safety. Well, I hope his boys believe that. Uh, it will be good for their spirit and for their morale. And in football, well, one thing I've learned is that you never say never. No matter how black it looks, and Zakia won't be able to get to that one. Too much pace on that forward pass. But Zikie is your modern day left back. Maroots all the way down that left touch line. And it's a Bube Upoku. Well, the ball dipped just a little too late. And uh, that's a kind of long range effort that could cut goal catch goalkeepers uh, unawares and unprepared. That young man seems to have loads and loads of potential in him. And you want to watch out for him in the years to come. Absolutely. 
if you don't shoot, you don't score. 